It's a pretty special feeling when those tires turn off the pavement and get onto these sand roads in northern Wisconsin. It just, it feels like hunting season. It feels like the place where it's always hunting season. My heart beats a little faster. My eyes start looking. I mean, there could be deer anywhere, but it's just getting back to this special place that I grew up hunting, where I learned all those lessons from my dad and all his friends. We didn't take that many deer, but uh, just knowing that I'm almost back to the spot gets me excited. Can't wait to get there. Every year from 1911 through 1987, the Waldo Gang had their camp on this spot. Started out as a couple of tents, then after the Second World War, they switched to a great big 17 by 17 foot army tent. And then when it got down to a few of us, and most of the guys were in their 60s and 70s, we switched over to a trailer when it was just three of us. Made it a lot easier. The rest of them are all gone. I'm coming back to enjoy a homecoming deer hunt in the old spot. Now chances are, we're probably not going to get a deer hunting on public land like this in the short time that we have to hunt. I haven't had a chance to get over here and really scout this area. In fact, with this warm weather, we may not even get to see very many deer. But that's really not what this trip is about. This is about coming home and reliving great hunting memories that you enjoyed growing up. Well, this is part of the tradition, especially since I don't get to get up here that often to look around. It's the afternoon before the hunt. Season opens at 6.30 tomorrow morning. So I'm just going to take a little walk through the woods, some of the areas that I might like to hunt, see what kind of sign is there, which one's going to look best, and make sure that I'm not infringing on anybody's turf. You know, one of the things that makes this feel like home, even though I haven't hunted here for almost 15 years, is just knowing your way around the area. Uh, some of these trails seem like uh, I'm back home. I remember Dad, one of Dad's lessons was about hunting in this area, was if you headed downhill and you hit the creek, this is the KC Creek, just follow it upstream and you'll come out right at where the camp is. This is a spot that sends shivers down my spine. It's a place my dad took his last deer. Turns out it was the biggest deer he ever shot. It was a warm deer season like this one, but it was rainy. And one afternoon, we got the creek down below us. He and I decided to work together, but on opposite sides of the creek, one of us would work ahead and then sit, and the other one would work ahead and then sit, and the other one would work ahead and then sit. And about the second swing that I was making on the other side of the creek, I heard one shot over here and I knew it had to be coming from where dad was. So I think I was 17 years old at the time. I darted down through the creek bottom, came up the other side, and here was dad standing over this big buck. And he'd hunted 40 years, 50 years to that point. He was shaking so hard, he couldn't get the string through the little opening in his tag. So I came up here and we got it field dressed and put the tag in the deer and could tell he was excited. So this spot is very, very special to me, um, especially on this hunt because I'm going to use Dad's rifle, and that was also the last deer that that rifle took some 22-ish years ago. Now there's a pretty good rub, but this is, is a place where a deer came in late August, early September and polished its antlers on here, and the bigger and stouter the tree that's rubbed, and this is a couple inches through the center, the bigger the deer is. Now I've seen them on trees up to six inches through the center, and that's a really big buck, but for this part of the world, this is probably a you know six, eight point buck rubbing on something like that. Opening day is all about anticipation. You'll dream about a record book buck sneaking past your stand at first light. Reality is that weather, Hunting pressure and the law of averages will conspire in such a way that you may only see a single deer all morning. And that one 
more often than not, won't have any headgear. That certainly doesn't make a homecoming hunt less successful or less enjoyable. If hunting is really in your soul, then you wouldn't give up these hours for anything. I'm back in a spot that uh, my dad and I used to come pretty frequently on opening morning. Um, to be honest with you, not having been back in this area for almost 15 years for hunting, I'm sort of low man on the totem pole. I've got to fit in where all the people that have been hunting all those years in between decide they want to go. It's just kind of the way it works on public land, or at least the way it should work. But I'm happy. I've got a chance to see a deer. And to make this homecoming hunt even more special, I'm using Dad's old deer rifle. It's a Model 99 Savage and 250 Savage. Big old marble peep sight on the tang. Um, no scope. Those old guys that I hunted with, just most of them didn't like scopes. I mean, back in long ago and far away, scopes weren't that reliable. So they all hunted with some kind of open sights. Dad never even carried binoculars, but uh, I, I don't know how they did it. Um, without binoculars, it would be impossible for me to deer hunt. But I got the old gun. I'm here. I'm happy. Whatever happens, happens. The guys that I hunted with, I have to admit, by the time I started coming up here, weren't that serious about making sure they got a deer. They just came up here to enjoy this beautiful patch of woods and being out and being together. So I think what I'm going to do, since I'm not so serious about taking a deer up here this year, is I'm going to head back to camp, put a pot of coffee on, have a toast to the old guys. While the Waldo Gang Camp passed into history after 76 years, many northern Wisconsin deer camps continue on, season after season. Old Veterans old bring sons and daughters who bring friends, and the torch is passed, Boys, as well as a good year. bowl of chili. This is it. I can't believe it. I can't believe I found this. The guys that I used to work with, or deer hunt with, worked at the Larson Canning Company. And what one of the guys would do every year is he'd can charcoal briquettes with lighter fluid. Then when he got up here in the woods, he'd punch these holes all the way around the top and bottom, put a match in there and light it first thing in the morning. Obviously, it'd catch and start to get warm. Then what he had in his stand here was a five-gallon bucket that he put a cement lid on right there. He'd put that can in that bucket. He had a vent right here he'd put on there to control the heat and the, the air. And he'd sit on this, and all morning, that can would warm up this bucket so he'd have a warm place to sit. Come lunchtime, he'd take the bucket off, his can would be good and hot, both of them, and uh, he'd uh, put his sandwiches on top of that can to toast. Unbelievable. Well, years after he was gone, not hunting here anymore, I sort of inherited this stand. And again, this is not what you're expecting on North American Outdoors or North American Hunter, but this stand has sentimental value because the year before I got married, I carved my initials and my wife's initials into the tree at this stand, and you can barely make them out now. It's W, M, and L, K. Unbelievable. 
I never in a million years thought I'd be able to walk to this spot, but uh, it's pretty neat. And from the looks of it, it should still be a pretty good place to deer hunt. Maybe I'll have to find my way back here this afternoon, right before dark, and see if anything comes through. Unbelievable. Talk about a homecoming deer hunt. When you don't get a deer on opening day, you have to improvise. This is meat from a deer I got on North American Outdoors down in Texas last year. When you don't succeed, bring your own meat. <laughs> 